Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. I don't beat up on watches on the channel all that often. If I don't like a watch and I think by extension you're not gonna like it either, I just don't bother getting it in for review, it's pretty simple. It's rare therefore to find me beating up on a watch, especially beating up on a Casio. I love Casio watches, one of my favorite all time watch brands. I must have a dozen or so in my personal collection and I wear my Casios regularly and with pride. I've always thought though they were a few outliers within the Casio range, or at least that's how I have liked to consider them, that are, how shall I put this, ugly. The one Casio that I have always thought deserved a special place in ugly watch hell is the DW290, a misshapen, miscolored carbuncle of a watch from the mid 1990s. It's a bit famous though, it's the watch that Tom Cruise wore back in 1996 for Mission Impossible 1. And I know that the DW290 has been getting a lot of love, a lot of wrist time and a lot of air time thanks to a fairly prominent watch YouTuber shall we see recently. Each to their own I guess, but I have no idea what anyone sees in that thing, it is a minger. You can imagine my shock and my horror therefore when I was trawling for nuggets on the internet recently and I came across this. It is the Casio DW291. Now if that nomenclature does not suggest that this watch is a direct successor to the TW290 then I don't know what does. Casio. You had 25 years, you had a quarter of a century to improve upon the 290. I don't even know that you did. Let's flip the camera and have a look at it if we must. Okay, so clearly I am going in for the kill with this one. So let's make it a nice, quick and clean kill today, shall we? I reckon there are two things going for this watch. I reckon there are two potential reasons why you would purchase this as opposed to the plethora of other more attractive, in my humble opinion, Casios that are available. The first is the price. It genuinely is pretty cheap. $29 and change on ebay.com and there are heaps of them in a bunch of different colors as well. $33 on Amazon.com. I'll leave links to both of those in the description of the video as always. That is way cheaper than a Juro and about half the price of the cheapest G-Shock, that being the DW5600. In Australia, we normally get nailed for this stuff and yet I was able, for some reason, to pick up the DW291 for less than 50 Aussie dollars delivered. For the Aussies, I'll leave a link to that one in the description of the video as well. Again, that is half the price of the Duro and less than half the price of the best price I could find on the DW5600. The second thing in this watch's favour is that it's big. If you like a big and chunky watch that doesn't cost a fortune and doesn't weigh an awful lot, then this might serve a purpose purpose for you. 46 and a half millimeters in diameter across the middle of the case, 50 mil if you include those rather odd antennae like pushers. Just under 14 mil thick. It's always difficult to get a decent lug to lug on these Casios with the integrated resin bands, but this one measures up at bang on 50 mil. Now lug width, 18 mil lug width, so forget about putting this one on a NATO. This standard supplied resin band starts at 26 mil and tapers down to 20 before meeting at a plastic buckle there. Unbranded, you don't get everything for less than 30 bucks. Doesn't weigh much though, 63 grams as it stands. Now that makes this watch considerably larger in size than the standard G-Shock the 5600. Indeed, here is my latest G-Shock pickup, a G5600E, classic square shape, but with a solar powered module rather than battery powered. Itself a fairly chunky little watch, but not when you compare it to the 291. Look at that thing, it is a bit of a monster. So if you're on a super tight budget and you like a big chunky watch that doesn't weigh a lot, perhaps there is an argument for adding one of these to your collection, perhaps. And don't expect too many bells and whistles from the module for your $30 because you won't be getting any. In fact, it is remarkably similar to the feature set as found on the AE1200, which is cheaper and does pretty much the same thing as the 291. Even to the extent that they've both got that analog display showing the permanent home time. You can press as many buttons as you like and that little circular display will always show you the home time. Although it's so small on the 291 that you can barely tell what the time is. Not great design, I don't think. At least the main Arabics are chunky and easy to read. And just like the Casio Royale, this 291 is a world timer. What that means is if you press the bottom right button, it cycles through three 
easy access additional world time zones, perfect for the international business person on a budget who needs to know what time it is in New York City, London and Paris. If you press the bottom left button, that is the standard mode button. First push of that gets you into the full world time page. You can access all of the other global cities that you may need to know exactly what the time is there right now. One more push of that gets you into the first of five potentially independently settable alarms. One more push, it's a countdown timer, and the last push is a stopwatch. And it's the standard start, stop, and reset. Again, nothing we haven't seen before on other Casio modules. Similarly, top right gives you the light, and it is two decent electroluminescent orange glowing LEDs in the bottom corners of the screen, making this a pretty viable option after dark. You can set that backlight at either one second or three seconds. You can also set an hourly chime and that button press beep on or off. And that is pretty much it. 10 year battery, so it does have one of those lithium batteries and 200 meters of water resistance. Now I must say that is welcome. You don't get that on a Casio Royale, but like I said, it is not a proper G-Shop. Don't let that 200 meters and its chunkiness fool you. It does have the integrated resin band, meaning if you drop it on the band, you're less likely to cause damage to the module, you're less likely to cause the module a shock, but it doesn't have any bezel protection at all, meaning that glass will scratch very, very easily if you treat this watch roughly. Thankfully though, a bit of poly watch on these does buff it out, but if you're gonna be rough, if you're looking for a big chunky Casio around $30 that you can beat hard and not scratch the crystal, I would suggest maybe looking at the W735 with vibrating alarm instead. It doesn't have 200 meters of water resistance and it's not the most attractive watch in the world, but it might be a little less prone to damage than this one. On wrist, it does look like a bit of a whopper, but it doesn't wear too big because, as discussed, 63 grams, 14 mil is fairly chunky, relatively compact lug to lug, and it does sit nice and flat on my wrist. The proper overhead shot and those large Arabics on the main display do mean that you get a nice clean read of the time. Absolutely no chance of getting the time on that circular analog display though from up here. But why Casio, why did you have to make it so ugly? I can cope with the screws, I can cope with a slightly unusual color scheme and the kind of crossed hatch dial there. What I can't cope with are those four angled concentric flat bottom circular pusher things. They are purely decorative, they are purely cosmetic, they serve no purpose whatsoever and it's not a decoration I particularly appreciate. I guess they're harking back to the two southernmost pushers, the C pusher and D pusher, if you will, from the Casio DW290, but as already discussed, I don't think that's a watch that anybody needs to be referencing. It's certainly not Casio, it's certainly not 25 years on. So I'm afraid it's a hard pass on the 291 from me. I just don't quite get what they were trying to do here. It's not really a G-Shock light. I mean, 200 meters and the integrated band, it does some of what a G-Shock does best, but no shock protection and no bezel protection, which are two standout features of Gs in my opinion. As long as there are Casio Royales on the planet, I'll have one of them on my wrist all day, every day, and twice on weekends, rather than this monster. So there you have it. If you're into ugly watches, you now have a new one to choose from, thanks to Casio and the DW291. I just don't get it, I'm afraid. 25 years to improve on the DW290 and I don't think they did. Those ugly antennae sticking out, the screws, the plethora of text all over the dial. I can only really see this working for big guys who like big watches but are on a super budget and can't find a G-Shock anywhere in the 100 strong G-Shock range that they prefer over this one. I reckon I'm gonna get some salty comments but I don't care, it's ugly. There, I said it. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in a future video.